You are listening to More Than a Sniff, a weekly podcast of Western States Canine College. I'm Joe, owner and principal trainer here with my colleagues, Chris, Michelle, and Shannon. Today, we are going to talk about leash reactivity, and um, it's probably one of the most common uh, behaviors, especially as we're heading into uh, the springtime and summer and everybody's going to have their dogs out. So we're going to just talk about, you know, what is leash reactivity? What do we see as we're out and about that we would deem as leash reactivity? Um, and um, how can we fix it? And so what needs to be done to fix the problem? So um, Shannon, we'll, we'll start with you as far as out and about and what, uh, what and how would you describe leash reactivity overall? To me, leash reactivity is any negative reaction that your dog has towards something that's happening while you're on a walk. So for example, you're walking along, someone rides a bike on a bicycle, your dog tries to chase the person on the bicycle and barks at them. That's a reaction. It yep. can be to bicycles, people, dogs. Sometimes the dog will have a reaction for something I can't see what yep. it is. They just start wigging out yep. when they walk by a certain house or you go in a certain neighborhood. So any negative reaction to something that they are perceiving on your walk. Great. Chris, what, uh, what do you see as leash reactivity? Well, so just as a standard disclaimer, I'm not a trainer. <laughs> and that's why we have you here, so that we you know there's somebody I'm, else's perspective. I'm providing and... what's known as the lay opinion. <laughs> um, well, building off of what, what Shannon said, um, <clears throat> I guess I would I would define leash reactivity as um, dogs that that are reactive while they're on leash to certain certain things within an environment and those where they would not be if they're off leash. Where some dogs tend to be, you know, and, and I've, seen, I've seen it through um, you know, doing walking trainings where some dogs are um, just reactive on leash to other dogs. And but off leash, they're fine. Mm-hmm. Like they're in, in, to me, it seems like um, you know, maybe it's an association with with the leash holding them back or something something like that. Mm-hmm. But again, that's just my opinion. Good, Michelle. Um, I I agree with everything that's been said. Um, to add on to that, though, I also think that there's another side of it that is. That is not just the dog is acting negatively necessarily. Sometimes it can be the dog is too excited. And, um, the owner, even that, that owner will be like, oh, my dog is nice, but that doesn't mean it comes across to the other dogs as nice. Um, even if it's just a lab that's just super excited and you think that they, they just want to go play to another dog, that can also look very extremely threatening. So sometimes it's not necessarily a negative reaction. Sometimes it can be what you see as a positive reaction. Um, so I think it's just any reaction more than just looking at that, in that direction of whatever is mm-hmm. going on around us, um, positive or negative. I, um, I have a little bit of a different uh, view, and, and I think it's, uh, one, it's one that is hard to see, and, and that is dogs that are pulling their owners on leash is a form of reaction of the leash, and that dog is definitely not in a state of ta- being able to take on the environment. And, um, and on that note, we're going to kind of lead into what causes leash reactivity. And, um, and as a dog is tense, pulling and pulling and pulling against that leash, and something loud happens, something scary happens when they're not in um, the frame of mind of being supple and part of just enjoying the environment, um, creates a reaction in the dog because you as an owner are just the anchor to the dog and the leash. Um, but there's a lot of things that cause leash reactivity um, and, and, and going into fixing it uh, plays a big role in how or what happened. So Shannon, what have, what have you seen that possibly could be the cause of a reaction on a leash? One, uh, outcome at first would be if they're experienced something negative while on the leash 
for example, if you're walking in a neighborhood and another dog runs out from a yard and just scares your dog, right? Yep. yep. And you and they feel like you're not in a control position where you are in control of the walk and you can protect them from mm-hmm. whatever's happening. Mm-hmm. They might think they have to take that role of of protecting you while you're on the walk and have an interaction with the dog that runs out, whether it's an aggressive um, coming to you or not, mm-hmm. that can cause a leash reaction. Yep. Yep. Chris? Uh, I agree with Shannon. Um, it can be it can be broad. Um, and yet, I guess I don't I don't have a lot more than that. Okay. Yeah. Michelle? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it could be anything that the dog is reacting to, but um, I think uh, something that people don't think about is, is like, socializing. And, I, and I'm not even talking about socializing with people and other dogs. It's environmentally socializing your dog um, from, from no matter when you get them. And what I mean by that is if you walk them in the same exact street every day, they're going to know exactly what dog is coming. Um, and they're going to expect mm-hmm. that road to be that same way every time. So the next time you take them down a different road, even if it's just to go to the vet or something, yeah. um, that, that's going to be completely different. Um, and you don't know what they're going to react to at that point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think socializing, environmentally socializing, is so important um, at any stage of your dog. Uh, I make sure that this time of year, being that it's cold, my dogs just go to the grocery store with me so that they yeah. see and they smell different things. Um, dogs that I have with me, uh, like this morning, being that it was cooler outside, mm-hmm. they just hung out in the car while I went on a walk. Um, yeah. I, or I'll take them on different walks with different dogs so they have to experience different neighborhoods and stuff like that. Yeah. Just getting them out there and environmentally socializing your dog, I think, is so important. I think it's almost more important than actually just, like, socializing with other dogs and people. Right. Um, that they don't react to, to just broad things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it can become, it can become stressful, so then they, they feel like they have to be defensive if they're not exposed to it. Um, I had a uh, one case several years ago that um, the dog was fantastic, um, really with really anything other than kids playing in a schoolyard and anytime they walked past the schoolyard the dog just became incredibly defensive and but outside of a schoolyard the dog was fine with kids and it was fine if the kids were playing in the yard and and what we finally narrowed down to is the dog actually got hit by a car as it was heading over to the school to go like she she says well he'd get out and he'd go over to the school and the kids and I'll play with him and pet him but he got hit by a car and that pain was associated to where his thought was headed to to the kids and the school grounds and the noises and everything and so a pain and now all of a sudden that noise became it was a survival piece of I'm just reactive to it so we had to you know that's a hard shift because that's a uh, that's pain associated to that, the sounds and the smells and the, everything at the schoolyard. And, and so we really had to walk into that incredibly soft and different and help him know that pain isn't really going to happen when you hear those things or see those things. So that was a, a fascinating case. And sometimes you don't always get the information from the owner that you need to help, you know, a dog be successful or, and so, you know, out there in the world is of people and talking and working through leash reactivity, you may not know, it may be a rescue and you may not know what happened, but there's definitely little triggers that your dog is giving you information prior to the reaction to maybe help you put some kind of a story together as far as why, why that they are. Um, so Shannon, I know that you, you have a couple of leash reactive dogs that you're walking and getting out, um, how, what's your approach overall when you, um, as as the person coming in and just getting the exercise and and getting their dog out? What's what's your approach and how do you prepare yourself to um, go through a neighborhood with leash reactive dogs? So sometimes when I go and walk a dog, I haven't met them mm-hmm. before, so I don't know what triggers them. Mm-hmm. But the main thing I think with walking a dog and leash reactivity is the person that's on the walk with them has to be in a certain mindset to go. 
So yeah. because a dog looks to you for information and how to behave, especially one that's been trained by mm-hmm. someone else, mm-hmm. oh, you're just a new human and I'm going to watch you now instead, right? Right. So you have to be calm and not let anything phase you mm-hmm. when you're walking and you not have anxiety for what you think is going to happen. Yeah. So if you see a dog coming, you just have to say, you know, we're just walking. We're going to walk by this dog and everything's fine. And if you have to have an internal monologue in your head of what you're going to be, it will help you stay calm. Because if you start saying, oh my God, there's a dog. It's coming. I don't know what's going to happen. You start having anxiety. The dog can feel it. You might tighten up on the leash. It gives the dog a signal. Mm -hmm. You might move a certain way that triggers them to know, oh, I should be paying more attention to what's happening over here. So that's the main thing. For me, mm-hmm. when I go and I've never met the dog before and we're going on like our first walk, I try to be as calm and unflappable to what's going on yeah. as we can while, while being aware. Sure. Because you do have to watch, but that's what I try to do the most. Yeah. And I think that's really good. I think it's really good advice to anybody that has a leash reactive dog that you should take your dog out as if it's a brand new day, a brand new experience, and maybe it's not your dog. Maybe you look at it as I'm working this dog through its issues and it's not even mine. So you don't have those personal emotions of the anxiety, but today's a new day and today's a new walk. And this is how we're going to, you know, approach that and definitely prepare yourself for that, for that shift. Chris, what about you? I know you've had some fairly big raunchy ones that you've taken out. Um, I don't know how I've gotten stuck on those. I don't know. I don't know if that's just a me thing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they don't. Because you're a guy, you're, just, you're stronger than the rest of them. <laughs> God, that's sexist. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, the the one that the one that really comes to mind is a client that we have. Um, <clears throat> that it, this the the neighborhood was probably the worst I've ever been in. It's it was absolutely. The worst, and, and you know, without naming names or anything like that, it, you know, big, big beefy black dog. He he, he actually has this wonderful personality. He sounds like you do. Yeah, yeah, r- real a real super personality to him, and um, a little over the top player, but you know, not not anything that you know that that I would see as, as a problem. But but this neighborhood, boy, it just. I don't know. It just bred the worst of the worst. It had some of the most terrible dogs I've ever been in. And it was enclosed. There wasn't any out. You know, there was one way in, one way out. And it's like, well, you know, we have to make it through this or we have to go somewhere else. And, you know, and and I think part of their training plan, if I recall, was, you know, let's get this dog to the point where he's not as reactive. I was attacked in that neighborhood. I literally, I mean, attack probably one of the worst attacks i've ever been in and you know to michelle and shannon's point you know you know like michelle saying you know you want to you want to expose your dog environmentally yeah oh, man so true and this environment is just i think for any dog in that particular environment you you would have some type of reactivity no matter what mm-hmm. because you know you know not, not to sound bad but it was like these people that own these other dogs had no concept. Hey, put them out. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. They jump at the dogs. Jump the fence. Dogs on the loose. They come and attack us. Yeah. Terrible stuff. And we made it through. It didn't change this dog's personality, thankfully. And um, and it was you know um, to to hit Shannon's point. When you go out in that kind of neighborhood, you really do. You have to put on a, a different. A, a different mindset because you know what's coming and so does the dog and the dog will pick that up. You know, if you're anxious about it, although you know what's coming, um, if you get anxious about it, if you, if you get nervous about it, the dog's going to pick up on that and he or she is going to play off of mm-hmm. it as well. Um, and it's hard not to, when, when we were attacked by that other dog, it, you know, thinking back to it, it was very, you know, most people, in, in a dog fight, um, you know, you, you can end up with a little PTSD, some trauma from it. You'll hold on yeah. to trauma if you are not, if you haven't been around that, it's loud, it's scary. If you think, 
Everything. There's good, they're they're gonna die, you know. There's this is, and in fact, they won't. They, you know, nine times out of ten, it's not you know, it's a it's a fight, it's a get away from me, it's whatever. But um, when we were attacked, instinctually, and and I certainly wouldn't recommend this for 